Um, I was uh, looking at YouTube like a few weeks ago, and there was this one person who had, well, two arguments against atheism, and it was that atheism cannot account for absolute laws of logic or objective truth, and I was wondering how you would respond respond to that. Can I? Um, I think that everyone on the panel is probably gagging to have a go at that. Um, Aaron went first. Aaron, over to you. Sure. Um, religion does not have an answer for these things. Simply saying it happened by magic, and if you can't explain it any other way, then I still get to say that it happened by magic, does not guarantee you will win. Religion has no explanation for anything. I'd, I'd echo that, if I can just come in. I, I know I'm, I'm here more as a moderator and controller, of course, but I, I have always found it absolutely extraordinary that people are satisfied with the answer, God done it, because that raises so many more questions than it answers. Where did God come from? And, of course, they say, well, God always, always existed. And they seem satisfied with this as an answer. I, I you know, always... Um, enjoy Feynman's, uh, Richard Feynman's uh, quote, you know, I can live with doubt and uncertainty. In fact, I think the world is a much more interesting place with doubt and uncertainty. And the, the, the certainty that they have in what they believe is, to me, um, so retarded. But, uh, Thunder, over to you. Yeah, I mean, as far as I can see, um, nothing can prove logic. It's, um, it's an empirical observation. It's something that is apparently true. And it, it in that sense, logic is a robust model. It is a model with utility. And this is essentially what the whole of science is about. Is it's about forming models of utility, which are essentially models with predictive capability. So, you know, logic is one of those things. There's no particular reason why it should be true. It is just universally observed to be true. And, um, yeah, there, there, there are other properties of the universe that we also don't understand, like... Um, you know, conservation of energy, conservation of momentum and such like. There is no real reason why these things should be true. It's just they're universally observed to be true. And by actually incorporating these into models, we actually get predictive capability in the future. And because we are organisms that benefit from being able to predict the future, uh, we utilize these models. So, um, you know, to a degree, the fact that... Um, I mean, it, it, to say that atheism is trying to prove something is almost uh, a non sequitur to begin with, because atheism is about um, not accepting claims that God exist. It's it makes no claims about anything else other than rejecting that the case uh, for gods has been made. Um, so. Um, Atheism is essentially a, a completely irrelevant uh, red herring to addressing, um, you know, why, are, why is logic observed to be true? You know, we, we don't actually have a good reason why logic should be true. It's just observed to be true. Before I, before I bring Andromeda in, uh, Ian, um, is this addressing your question? Are, are, are we understanding your question properly? Uh, yeah, and Thunderfoot and you, said that... In, yeah, I, I, I want to... I want to uh, I'm sorry, do go on, I interrupted you. Uh, just really quickly, Thunderfoot said that, you know, every, these laws of logic are observed to be true, and the guy actually addressed that. He said that, first of all, just because we observe them to be true doesn't mean that they are true all the time. And second of all, the scientific method is based on the laws of logic, and to... Uh, justify them because they're observed would be circular reasoning, according to him. Well, I'm, I'll, I'll bring Thunderfoot back, but I know that Andromedus wants to make a point. So, Andromedus first, please. Oh, well, yes, this is, of course, true, but... Oh, sorry, did you say Andromeda first? Well, you're talking now, so you okay, go ahead. Okay, right. Yeah, um, circular by all means, uh, but that's true no matter how, which way you cut it. You cannot... The, the reason that we use things like the laws of logic um, the, and all the other various models, which we traditionally call theories, 
The reason why we use them is because they, they, they have utility. They are models of utility, right? Now, you can claim that it's circular reasoning, but that's essentially a complete um, redundancy. The only thing that uh, the metric by which we establish um, the worth of a theory is whether it has utility. Yeah. So I'll pass it over to Andromeda. I could rant famously on this topic, actually. Why, for example, uh, do, I don't know, why, for example, do electrons feel an attraction to protons? Why do they feel a Coulomb attraction? Why do they always feel a Coulomb attraction? Well, we call it a law. We call it, you know, Coulomb's law, essentially. Uh, but this law is something that we simply observe, and every time we observe it, the conclusion that electrons always are attracted to protons is underdetermined by the evidence. We have to sort of go ahead and assume it. We have to make an inductive argument. A philosophy has a, a, something like a, a monopoly on what is really true, rather like religion has a monopoly on spirituality. And I think both of these monopolies um, need to be undermined because science is one particular type of philosophy, but it's the only one which brings us any kind of knowledge that we can verify as a group. It's the only philosophy which actually allows us to determine things about the world um, to a satisfactory level that everyone can accept, that we can establish a consensus on. Because even if you take something else from another branch of philosophy, you can't actually verify it without utilizing the scientific method. Granted, the scientific method is a form of philosophy, and so it is circular in that sense. But by what other means can we establish knowledge about the world? there comes a point where we basically have to establish, we basically have to say, okay, this is circular, perhaps, depending on how you look at it, but even if it is, it has provided us with something that we now understand about the world, it has provided us with a practical application which can be demonstrated to other agents in this world to be verified. And to suggest that um, any of these things are absolutely true is unscientific anyway. Even to suggest that mathematics is absolutely true is unscientific. And mathematics does not apply to the universe exactly. It just corresponds very, very close to exact objects in nature. But even the universe cannot be said to be exactly mathematical as we understand it. So these concepts such as logic and mathematics, I do not believe necessarily transcend the human mind. These things that we call laws are constructs of the human mind. But yes, they do have objective applications in the universe they are clearly doing things the way that we understand them is always a model and atheism does not have to make any claims about the accuracy of this model and it does not have to make any claims uh, about why logic and why things should be the way they were why logic exists for example uh, it, it simply doesn't have to atheism does not deal with truth at all atheism simply deals with belief and a lack of belief thunder very quickly please if you could yeah, I mean, if you just wanted um, uh, a, a very simple appraisal of which of all of these philosophies um, uh, works out the best, which one gave you the iPod? Yeah, which one gave you the internal combustion engine? Which one built um, uh, New York, right? This is all based on scientific naturalism, right? No other philosophy has even come close to competing with the fruits of scientific naturalism.